Hi folks, welcome to Bentley Advanced Materials channel. My name is Pete Tyndall and in this video I'm going to show you how to make silicon prosthetic appliances. So here's the mould we made in the last video. In this video we're going to show you two different methods of casting from these types of moulds. The first method we're going to use is just straight A and B silicone and the second method is encapsulation. So I can do that, I've made a second mould. Let's have a look at the first method. For this method, we're going to use an A and B method. So that's just two parts silicon pigmented and essentially poured into the mold. And it results in these really nice prosthetic appliances that have captured all the detail and will glue on really well. So just a little bit closer look at the mold. You can see there's lots of texture in that. So we need to make sure that we uh, cover the whole thing in a good layer of mold release. And for that, we're going to use Ease Release 200. This particular mold release is great for silicon to silicon casting. To apply it, we're going to go on with a layer and then we're going to take a brush and we're going to brush it and make sure it goes into all the detail of those appliances. We'll go in with a second layer. Make sure to spray that from different angles so you get an even coating. Seeing as we're going to use two different methods to cast these prosthetics out, we're going to use two different members of the EcoFlex family. We've got the gel and we've got the 0020. We start off with the 0020. This is a really nice, soft, non-sticky silicon. It's mixed to a ratio of one to one by weight or volume, and it's translucent, which makes it great for pigmenting. In order to pigment it, we're going to use silk pig silicon pigments. We've got white and we've got light flesh. We're also going to use some flock. If you're not familiar with flock, it's incredibly fine colored fibers that when added to silicon gives tiny little dots of color. It gives you a more realistic feel to your pigmented silicon. We're gonna use red, green, and royal blue. So starting off the coloring process then, we're gonna start off with white. I always begin with white, and then I'll add small amounts of flesh color so I can get the tonal quality that I want. So the same with the flesh color, we're going to pre-mix that. And we'll just put a tiny drop of that into the white. Once that's nice and mixed through, we're happy with the tone, then we can go ahead and start adding the flock. Because the flock is tiny little fibers of color, it seems like we're adding quite a lot in, but you'll see here when I mix it in, it just changes ever so slightly. I'll go with a bit of red. and finish off with a bit of blue. This will give us a really nice natural skin tone, but also the surface is broken up so it doesn't look like a flat color. Okay, so now that's pigmented up, we're just gonna combine both parts A and B. We don't need much silicon for this particular project, so I've only mixed 50 grams of A and 50 grams of B. So we'll give that a thorough mix. We're gonna scrape the edges and the bottom of the cup and just keep on mixing. It's really important that you mix this properly. Once we're happy that it's fully combined, we can pop it into the mold. So we're just gonna pour it in, make sure that we've got silicon into all the molds. We wanna put slightly too much in there because we're gonna end up scraping all the excess out. We're gonna use this metal scraper. So I'm just pressing down gently and in one smooth movement, I'm gonna scrape all the excess silicon out. You can see there's still some on there. So I'm gonna go back from a different angle. I don't wanna to press too hard here. So 
So once we've done that, that's the mold filled. So you can see here that the shiny areas around the prosthetics is the mold release and then the rest of it is neatly filled. Once that's cured then it's time to demold. For demolding I'm just going to use a little bit of baby powder. And I'm going to use a nice soft brush. You want to take it easy here, don't be too rough because you can tear these pieces quite easily. This just stops the pieces from sticking to themselves as you demold them. So as you can see here, I'm just using the bristles of the brush to demold it. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. And I'm just holding it there as I'm brushing it out. And there we go. I repeat that to all the pieces. So we end up with a whole batch of silicon appliances. So let's try method number two. So as you can see by these prosthetics, they're surrounded by a thin skin. So that skin is dissolvable so we can blend them into the actor's skin really well. So we're going to use this mold that we prepared in episode one and there's a few things we need to do to it before we can add silicon. Namely, we need to coat it in a dissolvable skin. For that, we're going to use cat plastic. It's a fairly thick liquid that we need to dilute with acetone. And here I've already made some which is diluted at 3.5 parts acetone to one part cat plastic. You can see it's really runny. And the reason we do that is because we're gonna airbrush it into the mold. There's two main types of airbrush. This one's a double action. The problem is it's only got a tiny little cup on top. This one's a single action and it's got a really large cup on top. So for me, this is always better for doing cat plastic. So we're going to put mold release in this mold. We're going to spray a layer in first of all. And then using a chip brush, we're just going to make sure it gets into all the detail of the prosthetics. And then we'll come back with a second layer. So we're going to start off by airbrushing a few coats of cat plastic onto this mold from a few different angles. So we want to build up a few layers on there. Just to check how thick it is, we can use a little pin. When you've got that nice taut bubble, you're good to go. If there's little holes in that, you probably need a couple more layers. Something to bear in mind is try and do your cat plastic work on the same day you're going to run your silicon. If not, it'll dry and shrink overnight and you get these blisters. It means you've got to tear it out and start again. Ecoflex gel is slightly different to the Ecoflex 0020 in the fact that this is a lot, lot softer. There's no need to be adding anything like slacker into this because this is already an incredibly soft silicon, which is perfect for doing this kind of work. As you see, it's also incredibly clear as well. So again, it's equal parts A and B by volume and by weight. So we're going to decant both of those parts out and then we're going to pigment part B. So the method to pigment this silicon is identical to what we did previously. So we're going to use the silicon pigments and we're going to use the flock. We're going to go in with white pigment to start with, followed by flesh. And then we'll put our selection of flocks in there until we've got a nice skin tone that we're happy with. Once we're happy with that color, we're just going to combine both parts A and B. Slightly different this time, we, we'll pour it in to start with the same as before. Make sure we get silicon into each wound. Mm -hmm. 
And then this time we're going to be really careful and we're going to use a gloved finger and we're going to gently massage silicon into each of these moulds. This is just so we can be 100% certain that we're pushing out any air bubbles, getting silicon into undercuts and making sure we've got good coverage. Once we're happy with that, we're back to the metal scraper. Just be careful of adding too much pressure at this point because you don't want to pull that cap plastic out. The same as before, we're going to scrape it across and we don't want any silicon on the flat part around the prosthetics. So just a final scrape there to remove that last bit of silicone. And there we go. So you can see here that there's no silicone around each of the prosthetics. It's really important not to have any silicone on the flat area around the prosthetics there because that's the bit that eventually will be dissolved into the skin when we're applying these. leave it to fully cure and then before we do anything else we need to fully encapsulate that and put some more layers of cap plastic on the back of these prosthetics. Once that's all dried it's time to demold but as before we're going to start with some baby powder. We've got a soft brush and we're just going to spread that out nice and evenly. To demold these I like to just nip a corner there and lift it up and then before anything else I'm just going to go in with my brush covered in baby powder and I'm just going to force the bristles in there. This is a very soft brush so the bristles won't damage any of the cap plastic. Just be very careful and eventually we'll be able to get those out. And there we go. So we've got a nice sheet of prosthetics there. You can see how soft that silicon is, nice and fatty. In order to use these, you can either cut them off the sheet as you need them, or I like to cut them into individuals and pin them to a board in order to store them safely. So it's just a simple case of using a pair of scissors, chop them all up, making sure you're only cutting the cap plastic. Once I've got all those cut up, the next thing is just to trim them up, tidy them up and pin them to a board. And there you have it. Two different ways of creating silicon prosthetics from a flat plate mould. First one pretty simple, second one a little bit more complex, but both very achievable. But if you want to see what these look like applied, make sure you come back and watch the next video where I'm going to be sticking these on. If you got this far in the video, thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it and you've learned some stuff, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell icon so you get notified of future video releases.